I'm going to start with three depth grooves in the gingival plane only first. Mm -hmm. I want my tip to sink in completely. What is the diameter of the tip? Here it will be one millimeter. Mm -hmm. Correct? So when I sink in completely at the margin, I automatically get mm -hmm. one millimeter. Now starting with plane one. Appreciate that? I've sunken in completely inside. See that? Sunken in completely inside. Okay? And this has to be straight. There's no change in this plane whatsoever. Plane 2. Okay, these are my three depth grooves in plane 1. Do I give depth grooves in plane 2 right now? I don't. I don't give depth grooves in plane 2 at all. Why? Because this is my functional cusp. So when I'm eventually giving my functional cusp bevel, that entire surface will go off completely. So no need to reduce that now. Now all I need to do is connect this to this. When I'm connecting, I can move either this way or I can move this way. Either is fine. But I cannot move forward and back. Else what will happen is these grooves will keep going deeper and deeper. So you always go in one direction, lift, come back, go in the same direction, lift, come back. Okay? You'll appreciate that from the sound that the aerotor makes. See that? I'm lifting. I will extend slightly interproximally but not break the contact. I want you guys to carefully pay attention. To I've gone interproximally but I haven't broken the contact. Same thing I will do here. Okay. So this is where I tentatively finish my can you appreciate a good definite buckle finish line? Yeah? It will have a little groove but that's fine. Why? Because I still have to use my finishing burr here. Once I have confidence of how I'm doing this, I could keep it directly equigingival at this point. I'm keeping it super gingival so that you guys can appreciate it. In a patient's mouth, this should be equigingival. Next burr is the interproximal burr. Okay? So this is the gingival crest. I will start slightly above it and simply just run through. And again, no change in this direction. Okay, this should stay constant, straight. Because the taper is already incorporated into your bird. Same thing here. Yes, can you appreciate? Yes. Two wings present there. You place it like this. Can you appreciate how the probe is going in? Right? And then simply just do this movement. Okay? So you place it inside and you pry it. See how the enamel ledge breaks off? Same thing here. How the enamel ledge breaks off? At this point, I have a choice of either decreasing the occlusal or going lingual. I personally always prefer to go lingual and decrease the occlusal last. It's a deep chamfer. So all I do is these grooves and then simply connect them. And as I move towards the interproximal, I will simply go ahead and connect it into the interproximal finish margin that my previous bar has already made for me. Okay, same thing here. Alright, so this is where tentatively my margins are ready. Okay, very important for the occlusal anatomy. You have to follow the plane of the cusp. Your burr cannot be straight like this. 
okay your burr has to follow the same angle that your cusp tip provides you with so what i frequently advise is reduce one cusp tip at a time don't do the entire buckle or the lingual point so that will also give you an idea of how much you have reduced try to keep this angle constant go from the tip downwards from the tip outwards okay from the tip down and tip out see that tip out same thing on the other side Cusp tip, cusp tip. If you straighten out, you are over reducing in this area and under reducing the central fossa area, and that is where you start getting high points in the central fossa area. So your burr angle is important. It should be angled towards the central fossa, and your movement will be cusp down, cusp out, cusp down, cusp out. That will be along the inclines. Always, always, always follow the. inclines that are already presented by the tooth <coughs> now suppose this was a patient who used to clench now his inclines are flattened out so you will simply just follow the same incline you will not create a cusp tip in there all right so just follow the incline that the tooth automatically gives you you'll do the same thing for the lingual lingual you need to understand that because this is a non functional cusp you do not need as much occlusal reduction so comparatively less than the buckle but again the same principle one cusp at a time can you appreciate the entire anatomy being maintained here can you see these grooves standing up yeah this will make sure that your technician will be able to give you the cusp tips exactly in those areas take the adjacent tooth angle okay this is again what nature has given this patient this angle and simply pull it through on this one that is your functional cusp bevel all right so i'm taking this plane and i'm going to You appreciate how steep that angle is? Yes. Are we at the right angle? Can you see a plane one and a plane two? Okay. Now this plane should not be as sharp as exaggerated. So all you need to do is simply do it. round it off. Okay. Now had I made this plane two to begin with, it would have completely gone away in the occlusal reduction. So only do plane one, plane one. occlusal reduction plane 2 plane 2 what do i do on the lingual for plane 2 all i need to do is round the tips off that's it okay so all you do here is not essentially one plane but it's one plane with a rounded, rounded cusp tip can you see all the margins they may be rough that's fine we still have to finish and the occlusal anatomy which has a cuspal pattern mm -hmm. built into it at this point is where and i will use my silicon gate strips yes rt spot yeah this is a special color which is available from the company bosch it's a paint on liquid just like your nail paint see that yeah what you need to do So I'm going to take my two millimeter strip first, and just apply a pin coat. Place it like this. Ask the patient to bite into it. Okay, bite into it and make excursive movements. 
on these typhodonts you will get <coughs> very broad hairy marks but on the tooth you will get actual contacts can you appreciate that this tells me that in the central fossa area i have reduced enough but where i need to work is these first tips yes so this makes what about these marks the marks on the lingual am i bothered by them no, no. why because i want 1.5 mm reduction there. this is 2 mm so i don't need this and you will very specifically not overall because there already is adequate reduction elsewhere so you will specifically reduce You will specifically reduce these areas. <coughs> and always, when you do this, work on your plane too a little. Bit off. I will place it here. I will ask my patient to bite into it and make excursive movements. Can you appreciate that? Yes. Yeah, so I need to reduce only this. Do I actually go ahead and reduce this right now? No. Why? Because during the finishing, this will any which ways be eliminated. Now, when you do lingual reduction, which is 1.5, you will almost always get a mark on the buckle where already there is a two millimeter reduction. So, do you need to reduce more on the buckle? No. Let's understand when this goes inside and the patient bites, the entire assembly folds upon itself, and because of that, the ink is. Transferred. Your two millimeter reduction is already achieved. Okay. So you place this inside. Close. Ask the patient to make this movement. See that? Only the tips have to be modified a little further. These marks I'm not bothered about. I don't <coughs> have to reduce this further. Only that one mark which I received earlier that I will further modify. Now this I will slightly reduce. Again, very selectively. That's about it. Okay, nothing more than this. Now you know for a fact that you have two millimeter reduction on the buckle and one point five on the lingual. There's no guesswork involved here. All right, the deep chamfer, but with a fine, fine grit. That's the red ring bird. Where do I use this? Everywhere excepting for this margin. Okay, why? Because buccal margin is a radial shoulder margin, and I don't want to change the anatomy of that. So I will usually start on the interproximal areas. Okay. A little more here because I knew this was slightly underrated. Once I have achieved this, I put in my last burr, which is my end cutting burr. Okay, can you appreciate the lift from this angle? Can you? Yeah. Okay. See, I am going to. Small pull strokes towards you, and the entire margin becomes smooth. Okay, so continue the same thing. Can you see three sixty degree margin? No undercuts anywhere. 
a thicker margin towards the buckle, which is a radial shoulder, a deep chamfer towards the lingual. Can you appreciate absolutely straight preparations on both sides? Yes, that is because we've gone in with the interdental burr. There's no excessive taper there. There is a definite occlusal anatomy. There's a fossa cavity that is being prepared. Two millimeters on the buckle, 1.5 on the lingual. We're ready at this point to make impressions. All right, now this would be a little rough. Why? Because I have done dry cutting. All right, I want you guys to probably use water if you feel to. It will give you a much better, smoother finish. So when do we now, groove is something that I like to give with my radial <coughs> shoulder. That is it. Can you see a groove developed there?